Anyway, let's bring in David no, Priest, interesting stuff. goalkeeper and goalkeeping coach. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon, gents. It's those lit bits like faint right, then dive left. You know, it's 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 it, the the detail. Considering it's written on a drinks bottle, is something else, really. Yeah, it is, and I think uh, you look at most of them; they're quite simple instructions, just to dive one way or the other. Because when you start getting down the list of players that who haven't taken penalties before, normally those are the players who revert to type and and just go up and hit at one side. But they are the other ones that you've got to take special care of, and. M- Perhaps in cases like, you know, like Ivan Tony or somebody like that, who's somebody who's got a real special technique, you have to come up with something different. And um yeah, in in this case, Jordan's just um yeah, he's come trumps with with a it's seemingly a simple uh simple just go the right way that um the candy's going. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Saver Bruggen, who's going to be facing England, he must he's, he's gonna study, he's gonna look at what we did on Saturday. And is there a temptation for the the penalty takers to sort of think, well, I've got to do something different because he's going to know if I do exactly the same, or is it a game of double bluff? Yeah, that's uh, that's all part of the mind games, and I think that the way that England have approached it, especially sort of against Switzerland, you saw that most of the penalties, or two, at least two of the penalties, there were slow run-ups. Um, Saka, you know, he, he took his time. It was a slow approach to the ball, and when you do that... You give yourself more control over where you're going to place the ball. You're not rushing it, and also you're, you're giving time for the the goalkeeper to move. So it's, I think that's more of the approach that that, that England will take. Unless you're gonna, you know, you're gonna go for a, a high risk one where it's, it's going to go in the top corner or, you know, down the mid, right down the middle of the goal. I don't know if you've ever experienced a player looking you <laughs> full square in the eyes like Ivan Tony does when he takes a penalty. You know, you expect them to look at the ball. So it must be a, quite a weird experience for the goalkeeper at the other end of it. Yeah, it's un- uh, <laughs> it looked unnerving to me. But I think that, you know, you, even though you look at that, the, you know, his strategy is to wait for the goalkeeper to move and put it the other side, which he usually does. Mm. This time, you know, uh, Jan Sommer guessed the right way, but, you know... The accuracy of the and, and power on it was just too much for him. But yeah, I, I mean, I can only think of one person was Henrik Larsson who did it um, in one of my first games against Celtic. And it is, it's you know, sometimes when you when you come up with a strategy. In that case, I'll go back to that game. You know, my manager, you know, he was um, he was very instructive about he's going to go down the middle. Henrik Larsson just going to put the ball down the middle, so you just stand as long as you can. And that's the gamble. He ended up putting down the side. It makes you look a fool when you don't move and you you think he's yeah. going to go down the middle. It, it, but that's all part of it as well. But I think when you look at the way that Jordan Pickford's approached it, you know everything's been one hundred percent. We talked about this last time. I think with Diogo Costa, um, you know sometimes you you, you just have to go one hundred percent. You have to be fully committed to what you do. And more importantly, and this is the key thing to from the mental side of a, of a goalkeeper. You have to believe in a hundred percent that you're gonna um, you're gonna save one. And you saw the Gareth Southgate's uh, comments afterwards. They know that Jordan's gonna save at least one of the penalties. So all they've got to do is just make sure that their penalties are, are, are spot on. It's oh, amazing how some go- sorry, Paul. Yeah. It's amazing how some goalies are better than others. I mean, we've seen Martinez, Emilio Martinez, in the he's now saved over half the penalties he's received in shootouts. I mean, that's wow. an incredible record. Yeah, it is, and I think again, that's you, know, you look back at the story that he's got and the way that he's instilled a real belief in himself. And of course, since that Copa America win with Argentina, where he became the hero, you know that gives him the confidence to go on. And Jordan will have been the same. Jordan was taking part in a game against Switzerland in the Nations League where he scored a penalty and sit and saved the the penalty that won them the game. And those type kind of bad stories give you that belief. Um, Diego Alves, a Brazilian goalkeeper who was, um, I think he saved around 23, 24 penalties in his career, um, a real high percentage of them as well. And he never gave away any of his, much of his secrets, but one of his big things was just the belief that he had that he was going to, uh, that he was going to save it. And I think that also lends itself to being calmer. You know, you, you're not letting the, it's easy as, even as a goalkeeper to let yourself, um, the, the situation overcome you. So you do something rash or you move a little bit early. If you feel like you're in control, like Jordan Pickford does, then you feel like you've got more control of the situation. You're more likely to save them. Uh, on the bottle, most of mm. the cases, it's dive right, dive left. There's a couple. Um, in two cases, including with Vargas, it says set 
react. So what what's that all about, David? Yeah, that's just about um, just making sure that you stay as long as possible, that you, uh, instead of um, deciding to dive, you're just going to react off the, the shot. So that might be one that um, where the, the taker might go more central. He might just go straight down the middle or he really waits a very long time for you to move. So you're just trying to transfer the pressure back onto them. Uh, so that's all that is. It doesn't say Penenka on that bottle anyway, does it? <laughs> somebody always did it. I'm it kind of... Somebody didn't try and grab the bottle and sling it into the crowd. Somebody didn't. Didn't Emmy Martinez do that? He did it with the opposition keeper's bottle, didn't he? A little while ago. <laughs> I'd be surprised. I mean, that's that is a that is a tactic. I mean, I don't know if you get a yellow card for that or not. I mean, if it, certainly if it goes into the way end, you're not going to get it back. England fans would have given it back the yeah, other day. True. But I, t- I tell you what, David, that would that would be pretty major s housery, but it would be effective, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I think if I was Jordan Pickford, I'd be going, jumping into the crowd and trying to make sure yeah. I get it back. <laughs> he it's, probably uh, would do, but he, he? You're right. Uh, <laughs> and again, that's all part of it. Now like, he's got to try and protect that information to make sure that that doesn't happen because he's having such success now. England having such, 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 uh, such success in the uh, in penalty shootouts that, um, that the people are going to try and, and do something different to try and put them off. And, you know, we, we always associate um, England with, with failure in the past with, with penalty shootouts. And a lot of it's been down to the people who've missed the penalties. But I think the real big thing, with especially with Jordan Pickford, we need to appreciate now, he's given us the chance to win these penalty shootouts now. I think um, mm. I think the statistics were pre-Jordan uh, Pickford. I think on, on average, we saved 6.5% of penalties. And he's moved it up to 25, 26% mm. now. And, it, and that's, it's, impressive. that's what's given us the chance. More than just people are going to miss penalties. But if you're in a position where you're going to give yourself a t- uh, your side a chance to win the games by saving penalties, that's where the key's been for England. Yeah. He's not the biggest, Jordan, is he? But I was wondering if the size of the keeper matters. Obviously, he doesn't because he's great at it. But you've got a bloke like Donnarumma who looks massive in the goal. I suppose from that point of view, it might make a difference. Yeah, it does. And especially when it's if you're reacting late to penalties and you're trying to give yourself the best chance those people with a, the natural wingspan of someone like Donnarum, they're always going to uh, go have a, a slight advantage on it. And, and and that's why he's so good at saving penalties as well. Uh, Nottingham Forest have just signed a lad from Corinthians called Carlos Miguel. He's six foot eight. He's right. a goalie, is he? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's just going to have to lay down in the goal, isn't he? And just reach up an arm. That's a good idea. Like, uh, yeah, draft excluder. Um so really, we should go. I mean, let's not go to penalties ideally, because I mean, we know now it isn't a lottery. It's a lot of science to the point where they've been working with uh, a statistician uh, called Ignacio Palacios Huerta. He uses, he puts all this data together in a mathematical model. It's a game theory called the Nash Equilibrium, which I thought was a John Grisham book. <laughs> but um, I'm sure I read it on holiday once. But the level of science involved. Um, I suppose the point I'm making is that we sh- rather than going into penalties dreading them, the, 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 with the amount of prep we've done and the fact that we've nailed these ones, we should go in with a fair bit of confidence. It would be the Dutch that would be probably more worried if it went to penalties playing us. Yeah, I'd say so as well, especially with their history. And, and you know what? Just thinking about mm. that, it, it could actually play into our hands, really, because... I don't think Gareth Southgate's going to these games playing for penalties. Of course, he isn't. But we're, the way we the, the 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 games are turning out over 120 minutes, you know, we've been risk averse. We've been really sort of um, there's been a lot of chances in the games. So other teams might see that, and they might see that. Well, if that's a way the game is going to go, and then in the penalty shootout, it's going to favour us. It might not open the games a little bit because then they might think, well, we ha- we have to win these games in 90 minutes or 120 minutes. Mm. So then that opens the game up a little bit more. So it might work in <clears> our <throat> favour. It is a bit of a nerve mm. shredder. Let's hope he doesn't come to that. David, good to talk to you again. Thanks very much. Cheers, gents. David Priest there from a goalkeeper and goalkeeping coach. If we if we won the semi-final on penalties and won the final on penalties and <clears> won the quarter, yeah. would it take away from it? Or no. Would it... No, no one would care, would they? Still mm. says you've won it. I suppose so. Imagine what state we'll all be in if it goes to, goes to <laughs> that. Good. We'll all be in bits. Um, it's live on Talksport, of course, on uh, Wednesday. It, it was there was it happened in the playoffs. Uh, Max Strijek, who is the Crew Alexander goalkeeper, he threw the Donny Rovers keeper's water bottle with the notes into the stands for the really? penalty shooter. There you so go. devious. Thinking about that, Brigham, maybe or vice versa. 
Um, and, yeah, clips of the month. We asked you to vote in the clips of the month. And I think our two semi-finals, let me just double-check. I can tell you you can vote for in the final. It won't take me a second, any second now. Talk amongst yourselves. Mm. Do, 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 I can't even key in It hasn't gone into extra time, has it? It hasn't. It hasn't. It's not gone to penalties, thankfully, this one. That Simon Jordan, having a walk around Plymouth, got 70%. <laughs> did it. Okay. As did Wayne Rooney's hair. They like that one. Yeah, that was a good one. So, that's the final. It's Simon Jordan walking around Plymouth Ho, kind of, and Wayne Rooney's hair, as discussed by Paul Ross and Kane Reeves. Go along and vote for your favourite. The final will be up there in a few moments' time. There, your two finalists will play the winner just before four at TSH and J. That's TSH. A N D J. Lots more to come. We're going to be chatting with the good people at Le Keep, French newspaper that mark hard uh, and upset some of the players sometimes. Two out of ten for Mbappe for his performance the other day. And we'll be uh, trying to size out how they feel about the Spain game. And we're in the England camp here from Luke Shaw and all being well, Phil Foden with Fake or others. Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs. Monday to Friday afternoons, 1 till 4. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.